In this short series, we're learning the anatomy of the heart in simple, bite-sized chunks. If you haven't seen it already, watch our previous video on the mediastinum as you'll need a basic understanding to grasp what's coming next in the series. Today, we're going to be covering the anatomy of the pericardium, which is a tough connective tissue sheath that encloses the heart and serves a number of key functions. My name's Connor, and welcome to Anatomy 101. We're used to seeing the heart like this, with all of the fat and connective tissue cleaned away and its anterior surface neat and clearly visible. However, in reality, the heart sits enveloped in a number of connective tissues that keep it in position and protect it from the rest of the thorax. The most unique of these connective tissues is the pericardium, which encloses the heart on all sides from the roots of the great vessels downwards. The pericardium is composed of two main layers, the innermost of which can be subdivided into two more layers. The layer closest to the heart is the serous pericardium. This itself is split into the visceral serous pericardium and the parietal serous pericardium. Between these two thin layers is the pericardial cavity. The serous pericardium is involved in producing a small volume of lubricating fluid that fills the pericardial cavity and allows the heart to slide around with limited friction. The normal volume of the fluid in this area is around 50 milliliters. Surrounding the serous pericardium and holding the whole thing together is the fibrous pericardium. This is a relatively thick sheath of connective tissue that acts mainly to protect the heart from overfilling and anchor it in place in the chest cavity. Let's take a closer look at the fibrous pericardium now. The fibrous pericardium is continuous superiorly with the roots of the great vessels. From here it proceeds downwards towards the diaphragm. It's anchored to the diaphragm at the central tendon. This essentially holds the heart down and means that it changes position in the thorax with respiration. The fibrous pericardium also has a couple of sternopericardial ligaments that attach it to the sternum, which overlies it anteriorly. The pericardium is innervated by the phrenic nerve, which passes through it on the way to the diaphragm. This means pain in the pericardium can be referred to the shoulders. Blood supply and drainage of the pericardium is via the pericardiophrenic arteries and veins. Lastly, let's take a look at a couple of passages through the pericardium that can be used surgically. These are known as the pericardial sinuses, and there are two. The first is a passage transversely across the serous pericardium that separates the arteries from the veins. This is known as the transverse pericardial sinus. And the second is a dead-end passage that can be used to access the posterior heart. This is known as the oblique pericardial sinus. And there we go, that's the anatomy of the pericardium. We're releasing videos all week covering the anatomy of the heart, so remember to subscribe to the channel so you don't miss them. I hope you learned something and have a great day.